Three, two, one, go. Elon, I love you, buddy. You're doing a great job. You're, you're staying on top of social media, too, and that's good. But with all endeavors, Elon, there are rules. Rules of the game and the internet. I'm not going to tell you how it's going to be. I'm going to drive your Model 3. In a Jean Renoir way, yes, yes, we're going to compare an electric car to the meme economy and 1930s French film. Here we go. The Model 3 lives in the 21st century internet world. And this world has rules. Very strict rules. Rule of the internet number one, do not talk about Elon. This means any attempt to understand the internet message board will be futile. Number one also signifies that anyone claiming to understand the is a liar or a fool. Rule number two reiterates rule number one. Don't be a fool. Rule number five. And, and see me in my office hours if you want to go over every single rule. I'm giving you the most important ones as they relate to you and the Tesla Model 3. Rule number five. Anonymous never forgives. You've had workers' safety issues, UAW issues, workers' rights issues, both reported and unreported. You've had broken jaws, you've had lacerations, all this stuff happened at your factories. You've had a lightheadedness in, in workers due to adhesives. You've had a lack of warning signs and hazards not painted yellow because Elon doesn't like yellow. Anonymous never forgives and they never forget. Rule number six, Anonymous can be a horrible, senseless, uncaring monster. Critics are doubling down on your Model 3 instead of praising it 0 to 60 time of 5 seconds or whatever and a quiet ride without those obnoxious noise generators that the Chevy Bolt feels it needs or, or, or those other things that pretend to make engine sounds like Jaguar's new all-electric eye pace You know, that thing's gonna make engine sounds. Out of speakers. That's stupid. The Model 3 is correct. It doesn't make a sound. It and any sound it does make is electric motor sounds, as it should. Very good. And instead of saying that, and saying that the master display, after a little bit of practice, is intuitive, all the critics are focusing on is the misaligned door panels and the cheap window switches which jiggle around and the weather stripping that looks like it was cut with safety scissors from Mrs. Reese's kindergarten class. It's not fair. But that's just it. The awful thing about life is this. Everybody has their reasons. And yet, rule number seven, Anonymous is still able to deliver. The people of the internet love seeing your cars pin passengers back into seats under ludicrous mode. Comment sections delight in confused dinos. And people love that fabulous asterisk after the Dodge Demon's most powerful erect accelerating production car ever asterisk, except for electric cars. The people of the internet will still like you for what you have made. However, rule number 65, anonymous is not your personal army. The people of the internet will reject you if you try to command or persuade them to do something which will benefit you. Even if you're correct in every tweet you make, Elon, because rule number 11, all of your carefully picked arguments can easily be ignored. Because, Elon, we've reached the age of post-truth, see rule number 82, and hyper-reality, which the Model 3 remains chained. Is the Model 3 a car? or a perfect impression of a car. Well, if someone likes the Model 3, which I do, then it's a car, and if someone doesn't, then it's a fake car, even if it still performs the same function as a real car. Another way to look at hyperreality and post-truth is to see the two philosophies as an immersive version of the reader response theory, which is usually the first literary analysis tool you teach to students. A student who is using reader response theory will say, This book is about blank because it makes me feel blank. Because on page 190 blank, the author writes that blank, 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 blank. So that's 2018. How does it make you feel? How do you feel? It's 2018. What's important is how you feel. 
We're, we're done with what is. Who cares about what is? Yeah, forget your five senses. You know, who cares? How do the seats look? How do they smell? How do they feel? What noise do they make when you sit? And their taste when you lick them? Yawn. What matters is how the subject, capital S, impacts your emotions. How does the Model 3 improve your day? Does it make you happy? The seats are meh. The door handles add a pointless extra push-pull step to open the door, and they bend slightly when you open the door. The front hood is misaligned. The Slam on regenerative braking will nauseate your passengers. The wood trim is soft and I can press my thumbnail into it. The glass roof has no sunshade. And the key is a thin paper-like business card thing that looks like it's gonna rip. But how does a Model 3 make me feel? Well, every time, every place, everywhere I go, hose point and say, there he go. I feel like a $60,000 millionaire in a Model 3. I can beat your S197 and make your socially conscious girlfriend rethink her options with one stoplight drag. I'm better than you. People hate that feeling, I'm better than you. But when you're feeling it and when you're the one who is bettering, damn it's sweet. I want one. I want a Model 3. Insecurity is a hell of an emotion, isn't it? But when it's satiated, ugh. Man, I'd love to use this for lift driving. I'd pick people up and they'd go, wow. Doesn't matter how crappy it is. Wow. It's like a little bit DeLorean-esque, isn't it? DeLorean's a piece of shit, but wow. Right? I feel good in this. Therefore, it the car is good. And it's still fast. Look at me go. Uh, Ethan Hawke once said that a great movie begins when you leave the theater. You start reflecting, and it takes on a greater significance in relation to other films, other moments, other aspects of life. You can only take in the full picture in retrospect, and in some ways the same is true of a good car. A great car can be great in the moment, but the fullness of your experience doesn't come into relief until you're back in your daily or on the drive home, resigned to a car that used to impress you, but now only survives to disappoint. And so it is with the Tesla Model. Model 3. It's not the best car we've ever driven, not by a long shot, but it's one of those cars that really gets you thinking on the drive home. Because you've had great sex before, but no amount of strange is ever going to take the place of the girlfriend who knows how you like it. The 2008 Tesla Model 3 in this particular, this is not the all-wheel drive, this is uh, rear-wheel drive, and it comes packed with a motor that is the equivalent to 258 horsepower with 317 pound-feet of torque. But again, that's torque from zero RPM through three-phase, six-pole permanent magnet motors, which are basically three brushless electric motors that use permanent magnets instead of an induction motor or field windings. Uh, we had to look this up over at machinedesign.com to be sure, but the gist of it is that these motors rotate at the same speed as the magnetic field produced by the stator windings, which makes a synchronous machine, meaning that if the field is rotating at 2,000 RPM, the rotor turns at 2,000 RPM as well. Because because the higher the input frequency from the drive, the faster the motor rotates. These motors are good for variable or constant torque applications, as well as variable speed applications that require higher than average motor efficiency, so pretty much like a Tesla. And what also that allows, it allows chill out mode, which I think is one of the most important things uh, delivered to this Tesla that solves that queasiness I was talking about before. In chill out mode, you can just plant your foot to the floor and it'll go, hey now, it'll slowly dial in the torque. And in chill out mode, this thing behaves more like a traditional CV T commuter car and you could drive if you're driving Lyft or driving friends around and they just want a nice ride, put it in chill out mode, the car smooths the hell out. It's great. Honestly, if I had one, I'd probably drive it in chill out mode all the time. Unless I wanted to be a douchebag. The Model 3 has a one-speed fixed gear transmission with a 75 kilowatt lithium iron battery pack that offers a range of 315 claimed miles on a full charge. So there isn't that much range anxiety here as you might see with other models. Although I suppose if you're in southeastern Pennsylvania, the nearest Tesling station is in Allentown unless you're going down to Philly. But then you don't really see cars like this on our side of the state. It's pretty much the opposite of your traditional Pennsylvania firehouse wedding reception. This is a 
car that's dripping with unnecessary indulgence. Because, like Elon Musk, it's working double duty to both be a productive part of society, but also a signifier of something far bigger and more important than what actually is. The designer of the Model 3, a man by the name of Franz von Holzhausen, said that the Model 3 would be an Audi A4, a BMW 3 Series, and a Mercedes-Benz C-Class type of vehicle, with the added distinction that it would offer everything and more, namely range, performance, and most importantly, affordability. <clears throat> The starting price for a 2018 Model 3 is around $36,000, but you will be paying $60,000. And the reason you will be paying almost double is because if you want the car, you have to. See, the thing is, at the time of making this video, there are no more base model $36,000 Model 3s. No. If you want your car, you have to option it out. And the reason this guy got his car so quickly is because he just tacked on as many options as he could afford, and he walked out the door with a Model 3 that ended up costing $60,500. See, the more options you have, the higher up the queue your car is bumped. Well, the Model 3 also had some issues. Just this May, Consumer Reports discovered problems concerning a long-distance stopping in emergency brake tests, as well as difficult-to-use controls, although you can, get to, you, can, you can get used to this touchscreen really quick. But anyway, the braking distance was so bad, it was worse than a Ford F-150, a car that was bigger by several orders of magnitude. So Tesla responded in a very 21st century kind of way by releasing an over-the-air fix that fixed the analog braking issue that was causing the long distance stopping. And Consumer Reports then went back and changed their rating from unrecommended to recommended, which was unprecedented, I think. Tesla also resolved to fix other problems like uncomfortable rear seats and excessive wind noise in future builds, although you can pledge to do anything, really. During the making of this video, Elon Musk pledged to fix the water crisis in Flint. Now, we made this video on July 13th, 2018, so who knows what he has pledged since then. And you know what? I hope he succeeds. But really, it's like the big green help on Nickelodeon back in the day, where you'd call and call and call during the pledge hours with the hopes of getting to talk to one of the celebrities manning the phone lines, like Big Pete from Pete and Pete, or Little Pete from Pete and Pete, or Artie from Pete and Pete. And you'd get no one, so you'd try again. But first, you'd pledge however many hours to helping the environment. You didn't actually do it, but you said you're going to. And maybe in that moment, you meant it. Like, I love you after an orgasm, or an auto manufacturer after a disastrous review. But hey, kudos to Tesla for at least trying to fix things. They're not going to get everything perfect, but Lord knows none of us are. Other tidbits about the Model 3, it's 20% smaller than the Model S, but it has more ground clearance. Its features include the awfully named autopilot lane keeping, lane changing, and self parking modes. It should be called driver assist. This autopilot crap has to go. You gotta name it for what it is. It's an assist program. It's meant for all you Judy funnies out there who can't get between two cars any better than we can get between two ferns. Also, this car utilized 2,170 lithium-ion cells, which have a 30% greater energy density than previous Tesla models. And sure, the hood is misaligned due to a screw-up when Chris sent it to a Tesla body shop for a hood repainting, but it still looks like a Tesla, it still feels like a Tesla, and by God, it drives like a Tesla. And it begins all again. It's time to wrap this up, Elon. 2008 is the fallout shower from the modernism versus postmodernism cyber war. These two media theories are working themselves out and I don't think we're going to know the winner within this lifetime. Sometimes you win the internet when your cars break the safety testing machines. Sometimes you lose the internet when your electric race car batteries overheat on the racetrack. You can try to explain it away, but the people of the internet will move on to the next shiny thing before you can make your position clear. So... Follow rule of the internet number 33. Lurk more. Post less, Elon. Post less. Wait it out. Listen to the wind of the internet for at least a day before you tweet or make a video. You will find that most internet problems solve themselves in 24 hours. Don't worry. We still want to drive your cars. And every night when I'm in bed These thoughts of Teslas fill my head A Model 3 costs more than I could make The role I play inside that dreams The businessman I wish I'd be So I could buy the cars I'd wanna make